Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Mary's Handley on this Tuesday, the 5th of January. And uh, it's good to be back with you this morning after uh, a Christmas um, break. I hope you had a um, pleasant uh, week and New Year, despite the strangeness um, of it all. And of course, here we are today in a nas another national lockdown, which um, really, I'm sure, comes as no surprise to anybody. And um, for what it's worth, um, though I appreciate it does create real difficulties for businesses and all sorts of things, uh, there certainly is some logic to it. Um, we all know where we are and um, uh, we do really need to try and bring this um, virus under control. Uh, and this new variant is... Um, proving quite tricky uh, and increasing numbers and we want to make sure that our hospitals don't uh, uh, don't break under the strain. So uh, <clears throat> we'll sort of be back into the normal pattern of our daily broadcasts at 10 o'clock, which I hope you can uh, <clears throat> join me for. Um, we took the decision, myself and the church wardens, um, last week to move um, Sunday worship online. That was only going to be for two weeks, but... Now we're in a national lockdown that will continue until the national lockdown is uh, over and we will review um, at that point, depending on what tier we go back into. That's if they use the tier systems when we come out of the national lockdown, depending on what tier uh, Dorset is, we will um, decide um, uh, after February half term um, whether to resume um, physical worship again in our churches. However, that said, uh, one of the big differences this time, um, unless we get told something different over the next few days, is that um, our churches are not going to be locked. So during the first uh, um, lockdown back in March, um, we were instructed to lock our churches and people weren't able to uh, come into them at all, which uh, really did create quite an outcry from both clergy and laity and people in communities. Um, thankfully, uh, <laughs> the wisdom um, uh, or lack of wisdom in that decision has, has been seen. So our churches are open for uh, private prayer and uh, contemplation. Um, so, you know, if you're having your daily walk or constitution and you'd like to go into St Mary's or St Rumbold's, um, then please do um, observe all the rules that we've got used to. There is hand sanitizer uh, in the church and um, uh, observe social distancing if you find other people in there. Obviously, if you go in the building and there's a couple of other people, uh, two or three other people in there sitting there quietly in prayer, it doesn't mean you can't go in. Um, just maintain a social distance and um, avoid the temptation, as is often the case, to... Um, stand there and chat um, to them because that's really what we're not supposed to do. So our churches will be open um, and of course tomorrow is the Feast of the Epiphany though we uh, celebrated Epiphany Sunday uh, last Sunday. Um, our Christmas decorations are obviously going to be taken down over the next couple of days but the uh, full-size nativity scene and the smaller nativity that's on the side altar of course that stays. Uh, the nativity scene should stay until the Feast of Candlemas, the presentation of Christ in the Temple, which is the 2nd of February, which really marks the sort of end of the Christmas celebration. So um, though a lot of the fairy lights and things will uh, disappear and the floodlights from the outside of the church, uh, you will still go to church and you will still find the nativity um, scene there for the time being. OK, uh, just to just to let you know, um, the larger scene may disappear before the 2nd of uh, February because that's just dependent on the good ladies of the WI and such like when it's convenient for them to uh, to take it down um, but our churches are open which is uh, which is good um, so uh, <clears throat> yes uh, uh, third lockdown almost said second lockdown and um, clearly this is not going to be a fire break uh, as we had um, about a month ago or so um, it looks like that this lockdown is going to go well into February, possibly the um, beginning of March. But in a sense, we should be dab hands at, at, at this now and um, sort of know the score. 
Um, now, I haven't read all the new rules that have come out, though I believe they're very similar to the lockdown in March. But the overriding message is, is stay at home and don't congregate and gather. But of course, uh, we can go out for exercise and, um, uh, and to walk and such like. And uh, as far as I'm aware, though, I need to check. Um, <clears throat> they haven't put a sort of a distance thing on that. So, uh, you know, within a sort of sensible amount, if you're deciding to go walking in Snowdonia, that probably won't happen. Um, <clears throat> but if you jump in the car to go up to um, Wind Green or something like that for a walk, uh, I don't think that's going to um, uh, create a problem. Uh, but of course, you can only meet with one other person physically outside. So it's uh, unless they're from your household. So it's avoiding, uh, it's avoiding that. So um, there we go. What what is there to be said? Uh, I think all of us were expecting this in some uh, shape or form. Um, we managed to celebrate Christmas in uh, in some ways and such like. Some people would argue that in a sense we're probably paying for it now, but um, uh, this new uh, virus, the virulence of it. <clears throat> is sort of probably something that um, uh, we weren't quite uh, expecting or didn't fully understand, but um, but there we go. Um, so a few other things. Just a reminder, of course, that the uh, um, local support network, the Handley Support Network, that is still up and running. And though um, over the past few months it, it might not have been as active as it has been uh, in the past because um, things have been a little bit easier. Of course, that still is in existence and there is still teams there covering various areas. I'm part of Team 4, which covers um, Pentridge and Woodyates. Um, and um, uh, uh, email from <coughs> Andy Turner this morning, who sort of organises it, was just really sort of saying if um, uh, to spread the message to friends and neighbours via social media or wherever you communicate with them. Uh, if anybody needs any help and support, they just need to uh, contact Andy or one of the support team. You can even send a message to me and I'll get it back to Andy. Um, you know, if people need prescriptions picking up, food picking up, uh, if they're having to um, shield because shielding has come back, or if they're having to isolate because they've had a positive test or they've got symptoms, um, then there is a team of people um, to help. Of course, our local village shop, the NISA, will still... Um, be opened and um, <coughs> um, food supplies uh, are there. <coughs> now one thing that um, Andy did send me this morning which I'll um, pass on to Mike to send out with the link for today so it's this um, COVID, my coronavirus COVID emergency plan. Um, it's quite a good thing it's just something you can go through and it just helps you to think about the key points of what you might need to think about over the next few um, weeks put down some particular telephone important telephone numbers and the suggestion is in a sense that you stick this on your fridge or somewhere that it's very very obvious um, <clears throat> should you need help or a family member or something you've immediately got this and you can go to it and know uh, what to look like so uh, we'll send this out it's a useful it's a useful little tool um, <clears throat> so there we go um, right well uh, <clears throat> Let's just have a look at the Bible reading today. Just, just to say, thinking ahead a little bit, um, because obviously um, Lent uh, um, will begin while we're in lockdown. So I'm going to have a look at seeing what we could do as an online um, Lent course or, or Lent gathering. Uh, we'll probably use Zoom for that. Um, so I will be having a little bit of a think about that. And um, I've got a meeting after this with <clears throat> one of my rural field, uh, rural hope uh, colleagues, Janet Smith, uh, because Janet and I have been tasked by the diocese to come up with an online webinar to um, help churches look at how to possibly celebrate um, the Easter feast uh, this year. Now, <clears throat> I was very hopeful that we would hopefully be able to celebrate Easter in a more normal way this year. And uh, maybe that is still sort of still possible because, um, you know, they're talking about uh, restrictions will be listed, lifted after half term, though obviously not completely. Uh, Easter is the 4th of April. Let's hope by then there's uh, been, um, you know, a lot more people have been vaccinated and we've really got a handle on this. Now, though, in a sense, I'm fairly sure that we're not going to be able to 
um, have a large service in church because I'm sure um, social distancing restrictions will probably be where you know with us well into the spring or probably the early um, summer until we reach that crucial threshold of the number of people that need to be <coughs> vaccined but I am hoping in a sense we can do more than we did last year which was you know we were in mid lockdown and we weren't really able to do very much but um, that we can do some more stuff outside and such like as the weather improves though it's very cold at the moment we will explore the possibility of doing some more prayer walks and things like that um, in due course um, but that will be after that half term uh, threshold when <clears throat> the government will sort of review the situation and schools are likely um, to go back. Anyhow we're in Epiphany now and um, uh, the feast uh, or the uh, season of Epiphany <coughs> really deals with um, the revelation of God through Christ and the readings that you tend to have over this period um, in a sense highlight <coughs> Jesus's um, divinity and um, uh, this sort of revelation of God coming into um, the world. So that's the sort of theme that we'll get for the readings over the next um, few weeks. And um, <clears throat> this time of year always brings back very fond memories because uh, this, uh, this day, um, I think it was, uh, yeah, 2000 and, uh, <clears throat> January 2018, it must have been, I presume. Um, I was, uh, we ha I'd just flown to Ethiopia uh, to celebrate um, the Orthodox or Ethiopian uh, Christmas and um, Epiphany. Now, of course, if you're an Orthodox Christian, uh, tomorrow, <coughs> the 6th of January, is when you will celebrate Christmas Day. So for, for those from the Orthodox tradition, Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Greek Orthodox Church, Russian Orthodox Church, etc., tomorrow is Christmas Day uh, for them. And the 19th of January is the Feast of the Epiphany or in Ethiopia, Timcat, which focuses on the baptism of Christ, which is what we will mark this uh, coming uh, Sunday. So a very happy Christmas to all our Orthodox brothers and sisters who on this Christmas Eve in the Orthodox tradition are, <coughs> are preparing for, um, for that feast. Um, <coughs> but the gospel reading uh, today is from John, and it picks up on one of these things about the uh, this revelation of, uh, of Jesus. So it's John chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 43. After Jesus had decided to leave for Galilee, he met Philip <coughs> and said, follow me. Philip came from the same town, Bethsaida, as Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, the one about whom the prophets wrote, he is Jesus, wrote, he is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. From Nazareth, said Nathanael, can anything good come from that place? Come and see, replied Philip. Then Jesus saw Nathanael coming. He said of him, there is an Israelite who's, <coughs> there is an Israelite, deserves the name, incapable of deceit. How do you know me, said Nathanael. Before Philip came to you, he said, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus replied, you believe that just because I said I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you most solemnly, you will see heaven laid open and the son of man and the angels of God ascending and descending. This is the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> so there, in a sense, we have that first sort of early reading of Jesus beginning to gather the disciples um, round him uh, and in a sense what I've always loved about that uh, reading and in a sense um, it, it underlies all all the sort of contacts with the disciples um, because let's face it <coughs> um, they weren't really <laughs> the most ideal bunch of people that you would sort of um, gather together to um, begin this very very important mission but of course, God and Jesus as the Messiah sees beyond the veneer, the surface. He looks into our hearts and because he is God, because Jesus is God, he not only sees us as we are now, he knows the full potential um, that we have, what we can become. 
um, if we uh, simply take up that call to follow him. And I think that's really, really important, um, <clears throat> particularly in today's world and today and the, the mission of the church today. We often write people off um, <clears throat> if they don't fit into, uh, you know, a particular mould. And um, God isn't like that. Um, everybody, no matter what your background, where you come from, what your educational status is, everybody <clears throat> has potential uh, in the eyes of God. And God wants to let that potential in whatever way it is um, flourish. Very late last night on uh, TV as I was uh, channel uh, flicking, um, I noticed the film Forrest Gump was on, um, film that came out, well, must have been, gosh, um, well over 20 years ago now. Uh, and of course, it was a huge hit at the time, and I'm sure many of you have seen it. And what's so remarkable about that film is that, um, of course, um, uh, Gump is seen to sort of not fit in with the norms of um, society. Um, you know, it, it, in uh, condescending terms, he would have been described as a, a, a as a simpleton. And um, but <clears throat> when you watch the whole film, uh, and as he's sitting on that bench telling uh, the lady his life story as he waits for um, this bus, you suddenly realise that. Uh, this man is extraordinary. Though, despite his own sort of um, limitations, his his uh, learning difficulty, I think would be probably the best way um, to describe it, he has accomplished a huge amount uh, in um, his life and done some uh, extraordinary things. Uh, and of course, uh, that in a sense is is, I think, the essence of what we see in this reading um, today that um, uh, just because somebody appears <coughs> um, just somebody because somebody appears not to fit those norms of society uh, it doesn't mean we should write them off and, and thank you Bill yeah Bill's just um, posted up um, Rain Man is another brilliant film with um, uh, uh, starring um, Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise a similar sort of thing so uh, I love that fact that in all of us um, God can see uh, the potential. And that's really vital for the mission of the church, because regardless of where we are in church, however old we are, whatever it may be, uh, I absolutely believe that God has a purpose for us. And through that purpose, we will not only uh, help grow his kingdom and, and take an active part in that, it will also help us to flourish as well and to become um, full human beings in the eye and image of uh, God. Uh, and that can be difficult sometimes because uh, sometimes it does mean that we have to be prepared to um, step out of our comfort zones. Uh, and of course, this is most brilliantly shown in the Gospels when Jesus asks Peter to step out of the boat. Um, and as I've said before, the boat uh, absolutely symbolising what Peter knew well and felt comfortable about and in a sense uh, one of the things this uh, pandemic has taught us is um, it's taught us to uh, or forced us to think about life uh, differently to to view things from a slightly different uh, perspective and, and maybe to step out of our comfort zones <coughs> at times so the reading there of um, the call of the early disciples Anyhow, folks, um, I hope you have a good day today. Um, I will over, I'm just going to be getting back into the uh, swing of things. First day back at work, technically today. Um, I'm going to have a look at some things that we can possibly do over the coming weeks uh, during our 10 o'clock broadcast, some reflections or meditations or something. Um, uh, so that will happen. Uh, but I hope today you have a, a good day in um, uh, whatever, you're, whatever you're planning to do. Uh, today. Keep well and uh, keep safe. Let's just say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Do take care folks. Um, have a good day. See you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>